Saru, I want to start with you. I'm just curious, when you set out to write this book, how did you manage to tap all of these memories that must have been so hidden deep down? Um, well, the first thing mum did was like, um, I'm going to send you off to Phuket, Saru, <laughs> away from here, um, just in your own time. And, um, and, the, and I was there for two weeks. And, um, and that's pretty much where I started. It was probably a good idea too. Um, just sort of out of my environment uh, of being at home in Hobart, Tasmania um, and being somewhere else. And, um, and some of the things I did was um, when I first started was just listen to music and, um, and relax, sort of more chill out kind of music. <laughs> and that helped sort of, um, you know, tap in even further um, to those closed doors that had like cobwebs and chains around them. Um, and, and it somehow it just opened them and uh, we got sort of deeper and deeper. Hence, when one door was open, um, another door would sort of open a, a, as well and you'd sort of go deeper and deeper into the story of that particular um, part um, of my life. So it was a very sort of interesting, you know, um, process, but um, I'm sort of just glad that those memories were still there, um, which I sort of been very endearing to me. Ian, how did you discover this story? How did you two connect with each other? Um, well, the, the story itself was creating quite a lot of waves um, in Australia and actually internationally. And um, I run my company with Emil Sherman, who's an Australian. And um, we just, you know, our aim is to make international stories, but definitely to try and make international stories where I'm from in the UK and where he is from Australia. So we heard about Saru's story and we're like, we just, we just got to get hold of that. And we were sort of between LA and Sundance and Garth's um, episodes of Top of the Lake with Jane's episodes of Top of the Lake were screening at Sundance Film Festival. And Emil just raced off back to Sydney, basically, to, to try and convince Saru and his family to trust us. And they did. Luke, for you, was basically everything that you needed in the book and if not, what kind of conversations did you and Saru have to flesh everything out in your mind? Uh, almost everything was in the book, but not really. <clears throat> it was important for me to meet Saru and to travel to the various places where all, all of these events happened. When I got the job, it was basically like, you've got the job, go fly to India and meet Saru, he's there right now. We traveled around India to all the real places where all the events happened. We spent time with his mother that was both a beautiful and a slightly distressing experience for me because I sat there th with an interpreter and 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 just every single question I asked her for two hours w made her weep even more she wept and wept and wept but she was very positive and she kept saying no I kept apologizing and she kept saying no no I want to do this I want to do this it was a very emotional uh meeting Saru and his mother just sat there like just stroking each other and clutching each other and uh, and then I went to Tasmania and met, the, met his adoptive parents and saw what his life was like in Tasmania. So all of that really fleshed out stuff that was in the book, just in particular getting to ask Saru in more detail about what, he, what was going on for him emotionally at certain events. Here's a question for Sonny. Do you think you would be as brave as Saru was? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm my best. He's the best. I'm the best. <laughs> I am my best. <laughs> yes, he's pretty much the best. <laughs> Nicole, you and I spoke about how the two of you bonded and not sharing a language it just was spending time together. What do you remember about what you found was useful to create a connection with Sonny? Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> he, he likes cricket. And Garth Davis, who um, we all wish could be here today because um, he's obviously the director. Um, and this was his first film. I always love saying that because... Um, but he was the one that said, 
the way to connect to both um, Sonny and then the boy that would play Mantosh is through cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing cricket <laughs> um, and soccer, a little bit of kicking the ball around and, yeah, <laughs> he knows. And, um, and that was sort of – that was the way in with him because obviously, you know, he's not an actor so trying to um, – just gain his trust and his affection and, uh, you know, for him to even let me pick him up and um, all of that and just even touch him always and be um, his mother, I had to build all of that and that was through a different way, you know, whereas with Dev, it was just like, I'm your mum. <laughs> <Done. laughs> um, but, yeah, so we did actually have... Uh, a long rehearsal process, which was which was fantastic that Garth fought for that because it was so necessary and it encompassed many different facets and it was very unusual. Um, but you see all of what we did in the rehearsals somehow has bled into the performances in the film. Deb, is it safe to say you've never wanted a part more? You've never fought as hard for a role as you did for this one? Yeah, in fact, I turned up on the doorstep of uh, Luke Luke's house in Koreatown when him and Garth were still writing the script. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I went in for this meeting and Luke was like, do not look at that whiteboard. It's classified information. <laughs> they still had the, the beat points of the characters. They hadn't even finished the first act. But uh, look, you know, characters like this don't come around every often for people that look like me. You know, it's, a, it's really a once-in-a-lifetime role. It was, a, it was a pleasantly awkward meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. uh, hi, so all of our agents have said that we should have this meeting. Okay, hi, uh, want a cup of tea? Was a ginger, little ginger tea, remember, yeah. And then they kind of, yeah, booted me out so they could get on with writing this thing. So it was an unannounced <laughs> visit? No, it was kind of, I heard of the story and uh, I was just so inspired you know, by this guy's resilience. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, the, it's such a beautiful message to be putting out into the world and something that I really wanted to help breathe life into. But, uh, you know, Garth, Garth was, he put me through the ringer. And uh, I first Skyped with him after that from my bathroom in Los Angeles because it's the best uh, reception in there. <laughs> and uh, then from there, I, I went on to audition for it in London. It was a mammoth six hour process before we came out of it and, uh, you know, you know, here we are. Well, Luke, I mean, as I've asked you before, I, the thing that's so brilliant about your screenplay is that, like Saru's search, the screenplay leaves these breadcrumbs for the audience at these wonderful, lovely, emotional moments when Saru is at the dinner with his friends and sees the jalebis. I mean, I just completely lost it the first time I watched the movie and then, Every time you see he has these discoveries, there's another great heartwarming moment. Was that important to you, structuring it out? Is that why you had a whiteboard in as far as mapping out when these moments would appear? Yeah, it seemed to me from the very beginning that there was this, uh, th that I was very privileged to get this job because there was an opportunity to tell this story which is extraordinarily elemental, like a, a very primal fable about reunification with the lost mother. And that story must go back to the earliest origins of human emotion because the one thing I think that we all share, an absolutely universal common, is that we know what the utter vulnerability of the infant is. All of us, even those of us who never have a mother and, uh, and therefore the desire for safety and security, which is the, f the, the, the emotional underpinning of this film, is the journey toward that wholeness, that safety, that security. With that in mind, it became, it was a pleasure to sort of sprinkle in all the seeds and the moments and, uh, and that Jalabi moment was very overtly, uh, you know, it was Marcel Proust uh, in Search of Lost Time, the moment with the Madeleine where he, he takes the bite and the past floods back to him. In Marcel Proust's case, then for a seven volume <laughs> extended novel, the past <laughs> floods back. In our case, for one hour and 42 minutes. Right. Nicole, I know for you, presenting this story of motherhood is, is very important and one of the main the things you're most excited about. Also, adoption stories to me always get me and two of your children are adopted, so I'm sure this spoke to you on a double level. Mm -hmm. How would you describe what you're excited to bring forward with this as a mother and as a mother of adopted children? 
I mean, as as Luke said, the essence of the film is is the return to the mother, the power of mothers, and I think, um, you know, being a biological mother and an adoptive mother, it's um, it's something I love to explore. But the the essence to this role is that um, being the adoptive mother, the embracing of the birth mother, because we're connected. And my favourite line in the whole film is um, when he's shown me all of the, the wall and all of the information and what he's put together and, and he thinks that he's going to hurt mm. his son, Sue. Um, and she says, no, I, I want her to see how beautiful you are. And I wish you'd told me earlier because I think that is so exquisite in its emotion because that's the love that's the unconditional love and and sue will say that i mean it really is um that it's it's everything and that is the love of the child and also when he says you know you could have had children of your own and you got me you got us mantosh and i and she's like what are you talking about i wanted you i'm your mother and I love that too because I think that's a really – people see things um, a lot of times with adoptive mothers in a particular way and when you enter into the psychology from a different angle, you um, it, it opens you. And so I'm just very, very proud to be able to – and I was so glad that when um, Sue saw it, she was – um, so embracing of it because it, obviously it's very hard and, and Saru will tell you this, to see yourself interpreted on screen by somebody else. And um, probably the most important thing is that she feels um, embracing of the portrayal. I think I speak for everyone when I just say thank you for sharing your story and thanks to all of you for bringing it to the screen. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs>